Welcome to Honda Racing UK's 2022 attack on all things Superbike. This year the team takes on the roads and the BSB Championship. Beyond the Blade is back. Stop that. Coming up in this episode, Harv and the team will talk us through the changes to the 5 late for 2022. We take a trip to Mugen's European headquarters to talk tuning. Plus we'll bring you a day in the life of Tom Neve at home on the family farm in Lincolnshire. So the 22-year model Fireblade comes with pages and pages of uplift, if you like, with, uh, from the chassis, from engine and ECU. But lots of things that we can take from that that will lead into BSB for us in the 2022. The upgrades within the engine to help have a stronger torque or a lower mid-range power within the bike and the head modification, cylinder, crank cases and so on, throttle bodies, airbox, bell mouse, to name but a few. And a lot of those components will help us in the direction that we're wanting to go for 2022 with the BSB guys and um, hopefully having the additional uh, enhancements help us with our package and our development with, within BSB. In my hand here is the main change, so the cylinder head uh, port shape has changed. So the, an 81 mil bore engine doesn't naturally produce a lot of torque. So now for 2022, to try and increase the torque on our engines, the inlet port is smaller on this model. That increases the airspeed through the ports and the torque increases. I think, you know, in 21, uh, we, we fed back to Japan and I know lots of other riders riding the standard bike and the road bike, for example, just felt the gearing was too tall. They've amended that for 2022 year model machine. The Superstop mainly is where they're going to uh, see some of the differences, albeit they can change the gearing. But for all the customers buying the bike for the road, they're going to notice a big difference in the drivability and the torque and the feel from the 22 year model bike from the 21. We've dyno tested various different new spec cylinder head here at the, the workshop. So the next stage is to get um, a full torque map of the engine so we can understand what the engine does at every throttle point and RPM point and then apply that to our throttle maps. So that has to be done on uh, Mugen's dyno, which is a, a lot more capable than our dyno that we have here. So you've just heard the boys talking about Mugen and engine dynos. That's exactly why we're stood outside this massive white building. It's the home of Mugen Euro. Mugen stands for unlimited, and we're here to see exactly what these guys can do for the team. So I've been lucky enough to be in this room before. It's the engine dyno room at Mugen Euro. Colin Whittemore is the COO. We're just going to give you a brief potted history of Mugen, who are, what do we say, the, the unofficial tuning arm or the very separate tuning arm to Honda? We usually call it the skunk works, but I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> so the unofficial tuning arm to Honda, supplied by Hirotoshi Honda himself, son of Sachiro. Yep, so 1973. Hirotoshi Honda decided to go to work, so he formed his own company, which is Mugen. Off he went, and his father said that, yeah, you're gonna spend all my money doing that, but so since 73, Mugen has always been associated with the Honda company, yeah. just through the fact that Hirotoshi Honda is the son of Sachiro Honda. There's no commercial link as such, so Honda doesn't own uh, Mugen, and Mugen doesn't own Honda. 
but there's always that relationship that's through blood basically and so we've always been there to support Honda in its motorsport activities through cars, bikes, go-karts, motocross. Uh, we've, we've worked with Honda products and normally with Honda company. When we realised we were going to the TT, we didn't really know anything about running a bike at the TT or the TT itself. Uh, so we went along to Louth and we sat down with, with Harv and with Neil Tuxworth to basically pick their brains on what we should do. And really they just came over the table at us and said, yeah, we'll help you with all this. We didn't go to ask them for help other than advice, but, but they were just, you know, immediately they were great with us. They introduced us to John McGuinness and, and made, made John available to, to ride the bike for us. Harvey came and worked with us at every TT, almost as a, as a member of Moving. And we couldn't be more grateful for what, what Honda did for us at the TT. Uh, we had a great time, we had eight years working together and six victories, so you know, we, we did okay. Um, and now you know, our relationship is ongoing and, and we're more than happy to, to come along and, and help Honda UK with their, their um, BSB customers. With their, in particular, their, their engine development. Now, in this room, I'm at a complete loss as to what we're looking at, apart from the motor. The bit in the middle. Yeah, help me and everybody that's watching this understand why we're stood in, in here and what's going on. So it's uh, an AC dyno, yep. so, which is, runs through an AC motor at the back there, through a drive to the engine. Um, we can run what's called steady state, which is at a certain RPM, and we can hold that for, for as long as we like, or we can run transient, what's called transient, width, in which case you can take data from a circuit, you can feed that into the dyno. So you can, you can tell that motor that it's at Brands Hatch and it will exactly. do everything that a motor yeah. will do based on data from being yes. at Brands Hatch. Yeah, so, and it can do that lap after lap. tube coming in in that side there into, into the air box is what's called a combustion air handling unit so kahu we call it and that controls the speed of the air the humidity of the air and the temperature of the air going into the air box so as we're in control of that that means that we're not subject to the ambient conditions around which you would get on a more commercial dyno. So if you go to a, your local rolling road or whatever, it will depend on what the weather's like outside to what sort of numbers and figures this you're going to get. This is not your 40 quid power run at your local dyno room? No, no. This is almost not able to go and buy it. Um, but, you know, so you run a test today, you collect all that data, come back in six months time, whatever you've changed, but you can start from the test that you run there and you can run under the same conditions. The whole purpose of this is to know what the engine is doing at each particular point of its RPM and throttle range. And when you know that, you can make um, smooth throttle maps and control the torque at the track so you get less wheel spin, less wheelie. You can, you can tailor your throttle maps to the track better when you have this information. So to capitalise on Tom's success in the Superstock class last year, Harv and the team at Honda Racing UK have come up with a support package that involves everything from money back on your tyres if you win on a Fireblade in 22, to being given a bike if you win the championship at the end of the season, but also you get a degree of uh, mechanical and engine help, which is why I'm stood with Colin in the engine room here at Mugen to talk about exactly what kind of support you're going to be able to offer to Honda Racing UK customers. Well, basically engines are our business, so we're, we're used to maintaining and rebuilding engines and testing them. So when Harv came to us and said, we've got a lot of customers who, uh, who want to run the Fireblade, can I introduce them to you? Then that was great. So he introduces the customers to us. We take on their routine maintenance, uh, testing. We also offer a development on the dyno if, if they want to go that far. Um, we do that for both super stock and super light customers because obviously some teams run both. And, uh, it's, and we've gone from there and I think the, the teams seem to be quite happy with what we're doing. We particularly are keen to run in the engines when they're new because okay. we have a run-in procedure uh, using the proper oil, using the proper RPM 
intervals and it's important that the engine starts right. Cheers Colin. So from the clinical cleanliness of the Mugen workshop up to Lincolnshire, I spent a day with Honda Racing UK's newest superbike rider, Mr Tom Neve. So while Tom's loading his car up with a shotgun for us to go out and play in the fields, I'm going to let you know that the plan today was always that Tom and I would be riding bikes together. Unfortunately for Tom, he failed his theory test. So there's no John and Tom riding scenes today at all. Tom, come and have a look at what you could have won. This is what we should have been riding today, but somebody failed their theory test. What happened there? Why have you got to bring this up, John? It's like everyone takes a mick out of me at Honda for not passing my bike. I remember when I rode your bike at Alton and you stood on pitwall absolutely <coughs> crying, laughing at me for being useless. Now you can get your own bike. Yeah. Yeah, no, I will get my bike test done at some point. Is there a bike but in the range that you, that you want to ride the most? I've got a bit of revision to do for a start. Sounds like it. I've probably a Africa twin, I reckon. Yeah. Something like that. It's not really fire blade territory around these roads, is it? No. Tom, thanks for the coffee. Before we start talking about your off season and what you've been up to, uh, help the viewers understand where we are because I rode here this morning on the bike and I'm not entirely sure where I am. You could mistake it for being in a different planet out here, couldn't you? But no, we're out up in just north of Lincoln in, this, in the sticks really, where I've grown up my whole life. It's where we farm. I've never been out of here um, other than to go racing pretty much. So. <laughs> It's a beautiful uh, setup though. Eh? Yeah, I mean, it's not the nicest of days today. It's a typical winter's day, in it? But in the summer, there's no place I'd rather be. I absolutely love it. It's not everyone's cup of tea. There's not too much going on, but for, for us lads growing up, being on the farm and stuff, we've got freedom to ride motorbikes, go shooting, more or less do what we want when we want. And it works pretty well with what we're doing now with the motorbike job. We've sold a massive amount of the herd off but we're, my dad's decided he can't keep away from the cows and he loves them that much <laughs> that we've, um, these aren't actually our bulls but we're putting them to our herd right. and we're going to start again a little bit so they've all got the right hair colour haven't they? Oh that's good isn't it? <laughs> and so just shifted into that kind of winter tuning for Tom Neve, you're injury free at the minute. Probably Touch the wood, first, just grab his table The quick. first injury free off season that you've had so has that impacted how hard and fast you've been able to train? Massively. I've not had an injury-free off-season in six years or so. Wow. Every single year, even when I thought I'd got away with it last year, at it the last... Was knee last year, wasn't it? Yeah, last hour I managed to sever the, my meniscus in my knee, so it's just always been one thing after another, whether it's been shoulders or fingers or... Something. You name it, my yeah. foot, it, it, I've had it. Because we had, we got the indoor basically. Yeah. This is where we spent hours and hours practicing in behind here. So this is where you cut your dirt track team? Yeah, in, in here. This oh, field, this, literally we had a massive oval in this section here. Yeah. Just a bit of a dumping ground at the minute, but it is Honda heaven. We've got oh, CR250, CRF150, CRF450, CRF100. CRF <laughs> We've got the full collection nearly. This is my latest addition. My pride and joy, this is my new baby. It's on an angle because I've took the clutch cover off, it's getting blasted at the minute. Yeah. But this is a 2002 CR250 which I've sort of restored and it's an absolute animal. And then this is my super motorbike, which it hasn't done a lot to be fair. I converted it to super moto, it was when I had, um, when my shoulder kept dislocating it and every time I rode it I'd go span myself. So I've sort of kept away from it really. And then our local supermoto track got shut down. So it's, it's sat there, not doing a lot at the minute, looking sorry for itself. Just stand clear, John. Just, just check she's lubed up. Yeah, she's good to go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Pull. If you miss it with the first shot, yeah. give it another barrel. Okay. Pull. Oh, good effort. Pull. Got it. Boom. It's gone all right, isn't it? I'm a, I tell you where I am, I'm a long way from London. Yeah, you're not... <laughs> I think if you were doing this in London, you'd have the helicopters after you and you'd well, be locked yeah. up, wouldn't you? I'm interested to hear about, you know, your approach with being bike fit in the off-season. You spend time on the dirt track bikes, do a lot of motocross riding. You know, dirt track, my tiny experience of it, most of it usually ending with me upside down or I'm the same. on my bum. <laughs> um, you know, what does that give you in terms of 
physical and, and technical application to a superbike that's different to riding a motocross bike. I'm very lucky that we've got the indoor flat track just five mile up the road yeah. on my uncle's farm, which is run by Pete Boast. Um, and we spend a lot of time in there. Obviously, we can ride in there all year round on the little CRF 100s. Look, the crowd's come to see me today. I got a passion, yeah, yeah. I got a passion, full static, ready, young go. Oh, don't let it unfold. Be smart, if you're ready, let's roll. Like, That's me, I'm still in my home. So yeah, this is where it all started for us really. Before I ever went on tarmac, flat track was all we knew. We didn't grow up doing motocross. It was, it was flat track with Pete Vos on the farm. Um, and then eventually, my uncle, who actually owns this place, he, he used to keep cows in here and uh, they sold the cows out. And we thought, what a place to build an indoor flat track shed. No one else does it in the country. We can ride all year round. It, on a wet day like today, we're under, we're under cover, we're dry, and we can just spin laps. go fast on these things you work in an increment to always find margins and when you've got to think like that and think how you can set a corner up better and work on your entry position your body position to try and maximize that speed there's a reason why Marquez and Rossi and all them boys are doing it so yes yeah, it's, it's a real niche little thing we've got going on up here in Lincolnshire like I say not many people do it but it's it's really cool you know, I've heard it forever that, that there's being bike fit and then there's applications from riding off-road motocross in particular that make you a better short circuit rider or, or a better road rider. Is there anything that you can say, motocross in this scenario helped me in, in this exact scenario on track? It's really hard to say, it's a totally different discipline and I didn't grow up doing motocross so it's not, very, it's not that natural to me. Yeah. Sand down my back, I've got sand in my crack, and it's bloody hard work riding on sand. The biggest thing is just how physically hard it is to go motocross and put a 25 minute moto in. Yeah. It's, it takes some doing, it keeps the heart rate up, and it keeps your, your arms pumped up. You, you, you've got to be accurate, you've got to hit your breaking points, get in the ruts. And, it's accuracy, I'd say that's probably okay, the yeah. biggest thing I take from it is the focus side of it. The minute I get tired and my head goes, I start making mistakes and crashing, stalling it, not hitting my lines. And, yeah. and in road racing, obviously lines are the most crucial thing. So yeah, I'd say that, that's the, the element I take from it. I certainly don't take anything from jumping, if you know what I mean. I'm not <laughs> I can't stand being in the air. Apart from maybe Cadwell, that's about the only thing. But. So away from the away from the bikes, then uh, talk to us about the the you know your typical day in terms of the gym, the gym work that you've been doing, and the you know will you go out plodding on the lanes around here, running or not? Not running because I've got two screws in my foot, but no running at all. Of, no running at all anymore, uh, unfortunately. But well, actually, I think that's probably a blessing in disguise, maybe. My typical day now is would be to get up and go get my training done in the morning first thing and then go do some work on a farm or whatever I've else got, I've got going on in a day. Whereas before it'd always be do a day on the farm and then do my training when I'm knackered after a day's work. But the last couple of years I've really taken my racing seriously and had a vision where I want to go with it and you've got to put that first haven't you. Like these opportunities don't come around very often. The way I view it is We've got this very short window to make it happen, so it's, I'm all in now. So level with me then, what's the thing that you're the most uh, apprehensive of in terms of getting on that superbike at Snet, and what's the thing that you're most excited about? There's a lot of changes. I'm working with a new crew chief this year. Yep. I'm working with Chris Pike, which is... Crew chief royalty. Yeah. So. It's all coming together that it's a perfect opportunity. I'm at most apprehensive about just making it happen. I know once I get comfortable on the bike, I know I'll be fast because every bike I've jumped on, once I get comfy, I know what I can do with it. Just getting to that point, which, yeah, hopefully it won't be too long until we reach that level. That's the only thing I'm apprehensive about. I'd say it's not about the speed of the bike or 
the performance. The, yeah, that doesn't bother me too much. It's not something I'm too worried about, really. But I know deep down I've put the effort in, so there's, I don't feel like there's anything I've left on the table where, for, as an excuse. So it's just take my time, feel my way into it with a mature approach, and we'll see how we go. Can't, can't ask for any, any more than that, mate. So thanks for joining us for what we hope will be an amazing season. If you've enjoyed this content and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel.